All right, so I was just making a video on how to uh, clean these screens the proper way, or at least without damaging them further. Um, and I was talking about this screen that I totally, totally ruined. I, I ripped up a significant portion of the polarizer here. And um, I was thinking I'd try to fix it, but I mean, why not do it on video? Um, that way, if I screw it up, I can show you what not to do. And that way, if I do it right, then, well, you can work off that and figure out the right way to do it. But anyway, these screens have two layers that are on top of the actual liquid crystal matrix. Uh, there's this diffuser layer. I don't know specifically what it is. It might just be like a, like a screen protector or something. And then the actual polarizer underneath. Without the polarizer, these screens are total garbage. Um, as in, they just don't work at all. So if I turn this on, you can see here uh, that I ended up ripping up some of the polarizer. And as I was just now trying to remove the rest of the polarizer to try and fix it, I was not pulling up the polarizer itself, but one of the protective layers. So I need to go back in here and remove the polarizer uh, to actually try and fix this. Now, my concern is these screens are a lot, a lot thinner and a lot more delicate than the Game Boy Pocket and DMG screens uh, that these sort of repairs are normally done to. The material is like an order of magnitude thinner, so just scratching at it, you can see I'm deforming the pixels, uh, or disturbing the liquid crystals, rather. But my concern is peeling up this layer is going to damage the screen. Now, I'm fairly confident that heat will help, so I might just try that out, but I'm going to try and get it started without any heat. Uh, but I do need, I'm thinking I'm gonna try a knife just to try and get under this polarizer to get this started. Um, now, I think the corner might be the best place to start. That way, if I accidentally scratch something, you know, it's off to the side and not like right in the middle. I think I'm just tearing it. I don't think I'm actually lifting it. So let's try over here. I think I already started lifting it over here when I was removing it. Oh, and it's coming off in pieces. Yeah, this is going to be rough. On the bright side, I shouldn't, yeah, there we go, I'm getting it. On the bright side, I shouldn't damage the uh, screen with my knife. The glass should be harder than that. I'm gonna detach it so I don't accidentally rip something. I'll just have to check it again later. So far, it's coming off surprisingly easy, which is how I damaged it in the first place. Again, I think heat will definitely help, so I should try it out. Uh, that's probably a bit hot, but we'll try it. I'm going to use my uh, hot air station, and uh, just, just a warning, it is kind of loud, and it does make my lights flicker quite significantly, so if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, just warning here. Ah, I dropped my solder. I have my hot air station set to almost 300 degrees uh, Celsius, I think. I'm assuming it's in Celsius. It's Chinese station and there's no indication. Uh, either way, I can and will damage the screen with too much heat if I 
keep this on it too long so I'm going to make sure to move it around uh, keep it at a decent distance you can see about how far away that is I'm using my fingers as a gauge for how hot it's getting if it's too hot for my fingers it's probably too hot for the screen so for now I think we're good I've also got a 3d printed bracket on it if that starts melting it's definitely too hot So again, it's set to 290. My error is at about two and a half out of eight, whatever that means. All right, I think that's plenty hot. All right, so yeah, that definitely helped. Oops. Just give me that corner. Oh yeah. Ooh, the bracket's coming off because of the heat. Oh no, it's ripping. That's okay, we can work around that. I didn't want to have to, but we can. No, that's what I was afraid of. Without that protective layer, it's much thinner and rips much easier. I think we're in surprisingly good shape though. might end up having to go get like a razor blade scraper and uh, just sit here slowly and painfully scraping this up Now at this point, I'm not sure if I'm just scraping up adhesive or if this is polarizer. I think it's polarizer, which is why I'm continuing. But if it's just adhesive, we could just clean it up with uh, make that goof off. Nice. That was a big chunk. You know, I just realized why they sell um, like iPhone LCD digitize or polarizers on AliExpress and the like because of people doing exactly what I just did. They pull, they salvage the LCD from a broken 
Oops, I'm cutting the frame. They salvage the LCD from a broken digitizer, and then this happens. So they fix the LCD. I always wondered what the heck was happening to these phones that they were selling um, polarizers for them. But this must be exactly it. I didn't think the phones would be old enough to uh, have like UV damage to the polarizer. thinking at this point more heat might help but my problem is just getting under this thing without cutting it because it's so thin and if I cut it then I just pull it off strips at a time instead of in big chunks Which I suppose the strips are probably fine for uh, being delicate, but I'd rather do this quickly. It's not like I don't have extra screens to try this on. I just started with this one because it's the worst. Yeah, let me go get a scraper. This might be easier. I'll be right back. All right, I usually use this for separating prints on my 3D printer from the bed. Ooh, that was a good idea, I hope. Look at that. Slides right under there. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it was so close. A little bit. Need to scrape off. That might just be adhesive. All right, I think I've done it. I should have done that a while ago. Let's test it out, make sure I didn't break it. So it should be just a full white screen when I turn this on. Indeed it is, and then I should be able to take polarizer I removed and check it out. Doesn't look like I broke it. Let's go to the main screen. Nice. That is not the result I expected. That is significantly better. Okay, so now I need to uh, try cleaning this up and I'm gonna use the same method I employed in that last video and this thing is already wet with uh, goof off from the last video that I just filmed 15 minutes ago
claws is working swimmingly. Have all this, all these chunks of adhesive that are just being stubborn and sticking to the screen. Uh, oh, let's try some glass cleaner. Since this is actually glass, it should work pretty good. So far, so good. All right. Last step here. buff it with my other rag. Because remember, any, any imperfections we leave now, we are going to see, and they're going to be nearly impossible to remove later without starting over. Which means, knowing me, I should just not even bother because I'm just going to touch it as soon as I uh, lay down this polarizer. Because that always happens. Okay. Alright, I think I need to pause for a minute and go find a polarizer to try it out. It's looking pretty good. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so it's not what I was looking for, but it's what I have. I found this square polarizer sheet that came with these cheapo uh, original Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket backlight kits. Um, and because these polarizers are directional, we will have to plug this in to see how it goes. All right. So, spoiler alert, it's uh, going to work. I'm just trying to get to the menu here. So, there we go. I suppose if you wanted a uh, cool inverted screen, you could do that. But that's what we're going for. So that's what we'll do. On some screens, I have seen where you have to do it uh, at 45 degrees. Uh, thankfully, this isn't one because this sheet just is barely big enough if I had to do that. But 90 degrees should be fine. And I've already got two straight edges, so I could just cut it like that. Nice. Oh, this is coming out so nicely. I've also seen sometimes, uh, you gotta get the right side down. Not 100% sure the reasoning on that, but 
I should be fine no matter what, as long as I cut it to the right size. All right. I'm gonna cut this to the size I need. Where's my tape? There it is. Just gonna line that up right there. Stick it down with a little bit of tape. And there we go. Now, in theory, I could just leave it like this because uh, I'm probably never going to get it clean. But this polarizer here, oh, and I really should have marked off what side that was. I wasn't thinking. Okay. So this is the front here. There should be two films on this. And that peels off on that side. And this side has adhesive. So we'll have to flip it over. And then a film on this side, which is nice and smooth, but now covered with fingerprints. All right. So we want to stick that down just like that. Give it one final cleaning. Put the scissors away. And I'll probably have to cut another polarizer after this. I just I can't imagine getting it on the first try. Here goes nothing. I saw some lint. I gotta clean it again. All right, I wish I had I should have thought of this before I started sticking it down. I'm going to use my Pokemon game just to make sure it's applied smooth and flat. I should have cut this a little bit undersized because, um, yeah, I think I might have to make another one. I didn't anticipate this, uh, see at the top there, it focuses. You can see the polarizer's kind of curving up. And there's one bubble, but that's okay. Let's try it out. Ayy! Oh, that's beautiful. That is way better than I ever thought it would come out. I'm sorry, I just need to sit back and admire for a minute. So yeah, just the one bubble up here, which honestly isn't that bad. I could probably work that out if I wanted to leave it. Uh, and then I could probably trim this with a sharp X-Acto and then leave it as is. I'd have to do the top and the side though.
that's lovely. I'm going to use the uh, film I peeled off and put somewhere, here it is, as a template to cut the next one. But I don't think I'm going to do that on camera. I think this video is already long enough. Um, oh, I'm so stoked. This is the first time I've ever done this with one of these screens. I've, I've of course, done this with a Game Boy Pocket. Um, literally the exact same thing, just for a different reason. Because the adhesive had been broken down, not because the polarizer itself had been broken down. But exact same fix, exact same thing. And it works just as well and I quite frankly I did this a lot better than I did the Game Boy Pocket uh, but yeah I only have one more square of polarizer oh no I have two just kidding so I have two more shots at this or I can try fixing two more screens um, I need to think about that a little bit oh, apparently I just broke this Game Boy Pocket or SP probably shorted something on the PCB. That's what I get for uh, for handling it like this. Yep, that's exactly what I just did. The fuse is bad. Alright, so I'm going to replace the fuse in this Game Boy Advance SP and then I'm going to think about what I want to do with the screen, but I'm going to leave this video as is. Uh, don't forget, there is one more film that needs to be peeled off. Um, I'm not going to peel it off until I'm getting ready to install this screen if I leave this on here. I'm probably going to end up putting a different polarizer on it, but either way I'm going to leave that film on until I'm ready to install it for good. But that came out way better than it had any right to, if I'm being honest. Um, so yeah, anyway, comments, questions, hit me up. Um, otherwise, have a fantastic day, and I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.